ghost town of Sandon once was a boom town famous for its silver lead ore. But today, it's the unlikely home of the historical remains of a fleet of electric city buses that once plied the streets of Vancouver. It's the passion of Hal Wright, a successful trucking company owner who has trucks on the road all over Canada and the United States. Hal lives in Sandon with his wife and two teenage children. They live in a small frame home beside the river. Sandon lies in a forgotten valley tucked in the Selkirk Mountains an hour and a half north of Nelson. Now, sometimes the history of British Columbia can be found in the most unlikely places. Like right now, we're in the West Kootenays. We're beside a raging creek. And we're gonna tell you the story about Vancouver buses. In fact, it's a great story about electric buses that were used all over Canada in the 50s and 60s. The Canadian car and foundry trolleys were built in what is now Thunder Bay, Ontario. As Hal tells us, the trolley buses traced their origin to the end of the Second World War. Well, in World War II, of course, all the money was being spent on the war effort, and, and so transit fleets were becoming badly run down. And so by the end of the war, the, the uh, old streetcars, they were considered antiquated anyway. They were in bad shape. So all the major cities were, were quick to try to refurbish their transit fleets. And the, the quick and practical solution was to go to a, an electric trolley bus where they could use the overhead infrastructure of the, of the streetcar but they weren't restricted by the rails. The buses had much more mobility. Um, for example, when a streetcar broke down, nothing could pass it because the rails were, were clogged up, whereas a trolley bus, you just take the trolleys down and you drive around it kind of a thing. While not being confined to rails was a huge advantage, until 1970, the trolley buses in Vancouver were still considered rolling stock. Now this meant you didn't need a commercial license to drive one. What you did need was a railway certificate. Now these trolley buses were extremely green for the time, especially in BC, where most of the power is hydroelectric. Unfortunately, in many cities across the country, the low environmental impact was not enough when faced with a very aggressive lobbying campaign by the diesel bus industry. At one time, of course, electric transit existed in, in all the major cities. And then even the electric trolley buses uh, fell out of favor in, in the 60s at a time when diesel fuel was very cheap. And uh, the mobility of not being uh, restricted by the wires was considered to be important. Uh, people began to think the wires uh, were unsightly. and But it was largely heavy lobbying by the, the diesel bus builders. So. One, one after another was scrapped. All these beautiful electric transit systems were taken out and replaced by uh, smoking diesel buses. And, and uh, of course, today, uh, many of those cities wish they still had these, these systems uh, there to be used. As the cities were closing down their operations, there were two that were still running, and that was the Edmonton system and the Vancouver system. Well, Vancouver was getting more and more buses. Until in 1986, they had 230 buses. But then an unusual thing happened. They decided to have a World's Fair. And the people in charge in those days decided these buses were an embarrassment. So all 230 buses were sold off as salvage. They went to a place in Surrey where attempts were made to sell them into third world countries. Well, that sale didn't come together. Finally, in 2001, they decided that these grand old stately buses had to be sent to the shredder. While over 200 of the buses were scrapped, Hal managed to rescue 16 of them from the shredder and now is working on restoring them in the little ghost town of Sandon. It was because they were orphaned and there was nowhere else to preserve them at the time. And we were asked to help and being crazy people that like old things, we. <laughs> We, uh, we thought it was a, an interesting project and, and, uh, and we're happy to be involved. So we, we transported them up here on our uh, trucks that belong to our family business. And, and uh, they're, they're here for safekeeping and we've been doing uh, small amounts of restoration on them while they're here. Uh, ultimately, they will move on to a major center somewhere, probably as a, a small fleet. Uh, the concept that, that we're going on at the moment is that there will be 13 of them restored 
each one of them in the different uh, uh, colors and paint schemes of, of the 13 different Canadian cities that had them. And my feeling is they'll likely end up in Vancouver one day as operating artifacts in the fleet. Now these buses were built to last. Mostly all aluminum construction, the bodies and engines of the buses are still in solid shape. Many of the parts on these buses could be upgraded with modern equivalent while still allowing the beautiful 1940s shape. The, the bodies are almost bulletproof and uh, the steel components are easily uh, replicated or fabricated. And uh, from a practical point of view to, to operate them in, in uh, a fashion similar to what they do in San Francisco and Philadelphia and some of the cities that have done that with some of their vintage transit vehicles. I mean, the, uh, the, the axles and some of those components can be changed with modern components. And uh, the, the advantage of that, of course, is ease of maintenance and safety and, and compatibility with the new, but visually the same as the old. And so functionally, they could do the same thing that the new, the new buses do uh, quite easily. Sandon is an easy place to drive to. It's a ghost town now, but it's full of the relics of a forgotten mining era. But here, on the entrance to town, beside a idyllic stream, lies the relics of another transportation era. And until these old trolleys leave Sandon, this is another great thing to see in this small Kootenai West Coast escape.